and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Grixis Pirates. This is our next deck here for our Throwback Thursday stream. If you don't know about Throwback Thursdays from now until rotation, which is in about six weeks or so, we are playing decks built around rares and mythics that are going to be rotating out of the format that never got to see very much play, but they're sweet, and we want to play them here in standard before they rotate out. Are these decks the absolute best? No, but they're going to be fun, and we're going to hopefully try to pick up some wins. We got two wins with our Bant Defenders. We'll see if we can do better than that with our Grixis Pirates here. The reason why we're playing Grixis Pirates, of course, is the Admiral. Admiral Beckett Brass. One and Grixis for a 3-3. Where all your other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. So that's great. We got a pirate lord here. And at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who has dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. So if we deal combat damage to an opponent with three pirates then we get to steal any one of their non-land permanents that we want. That's a that's a tall order. That's tough to do. We'll see if we ever trigger that. I have never seen that triggered ever before. Uh, we'll see if we'll see if we get to trigger that here. So in order to trigger that though, we do need to play a lot of pirates. So as you can tell here, we have a lot of pirates in our deck. I don't have much removal. I got like a couple fiery cannades in here and of course Angrath cuz the Minotaur pirate that's just a sweet planeswalker. So we got Angrath in here, but you know we're not playing like Legion's End and all sorts of other like you know Thought Erasures, all that kind of stuff. We got to get our pirates in here. We got Spectral Sailors, Siren Storm Tamers in the air, right? So we got some some cheap flyers that you know we get three of these out there. Departed Deckhand is basically unblockable. You know it can only be blocked by spirits, so basically unblockable. So we got some really good attackers here for the Admiral Beckett Brass, um, Dire Fleet Captain can be a pretty big attacker. It's it, it's just a 2-2, two -two, but when it attacks, it's getting plus one, plus one for each other attacking pirate. So if we attack with like a Siren Storm Tamer and a Spectral Sailor, one of each of those, and the Captain, the Captain's now a 4-4. Four -four. Two mana 4-4s. Four That's pretty good there. And then we got the Poisoners, uh, which you know can either help our attacking pirates, but really this is what, like, I'm really playing this card as like my removal. This is like my Doom Blade that they attack in Again, you know, they attack me, and I play my poisoner the blocks and kills them. So this is this is really my removal spell. That's also a pirate kind of thing. That's why we got all the poisoners in here. Ruin Raider, little worried about Ruin Raider. Our mana is our curves a little high. You know, like with this trigger at end step, use life equal to card CMC. So you know, like we reveal Angrath, we draw Angrath, but then we lose five life. That could hurt. <laughs> so I just got the one Ruin Raider. A couple of Lannery Storms help us ramp a little bit into these things. You want a lot of mana uh, whenever you're getting, whenever you're playing Hostage Shaker to like Hostage Shake something and then and then uh, cast it right away. So Lannery Storm can kind of help with that. But Fiery Cannon could be kind of cool in this deck, where it's it's good against a lot of stuff in the format right now. But then also just like pairing up, you know, like attacking with a bunch of things. They make blocks where they think you know like multiple things are sur barely surviving, and then you Fiery Cannonade. And kill a bunch of stuff. It could be a cool little trick here. But yeah, that's our deck. Uh, sideboard Daredevil is just awesome against Thought Erasure decks. You know, we got some counter magic with Dispersal. Some more Fiery Cannonades. We got the Cut Purses, which is a pirate against the Escape Shift decks as well. Another Hostage Shaker. So this one looks pretty sweet. This will be a fun one to play here. What's up, Sanctuary Tank? So yeah, like I, I originally, like this one was kind of a, a difficult deck to to chop down. Because yeah, originally I started with like 90 cards. Because there were so many like pretty decent but not like great pirates of like to choose from. So yeah, like the the four mana net breaker, the dire fleet neck, neck breaker, that one. And kite seal freebooter and, and all sorts of stuff. I'm always like just disappointed with freebooter for the most part. I'm, I'm happy with these two drops. Um, the... The two drop I'm the most suspicious of is this Dire Fleet Captain. We'll see if it actually turns out to be kind of decent for us. There's a lot of okay Pirate 2 drops to choose from. We're going with, with the Captain. All right, so let's go ahead and play a league here. Spend our 1,000 gold, and let's see if we can pick up some wins here with the Pirates. 
Ooh, we should change. We gotta get. Sorry, Moo. There you go, Angrath. Ever seen water burn? We gotta get our pirate avatar. Do I even wait a minute? Oh, is it too late? Okay, good. I have Angrath sleeves. Okay, never mind. I was gonna make sure that I actually put like good sleeves on the deck. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube and you have uh, some some rares or mythics that are going to rotate out that you want me to play on a future throwback Thursday, let me know in the comment section. Had some good suggestions uh, previously from last Thursday's videos. And of course, if you want to see all of our th the throwback Thursday decks here, which are all pretty cool, uh, there's a playlist on the YouTube channel that has them all together. So you can find them there. We're going with the three color mythics this week. We had Arcades for the Defender deck, the Admiral Beckett Brass with the Pirates, and then we got Moldratha in a little bit. Anyway, we had a couple of subs here. Ross, thank you so much for that reset. Looks like I'm too behind. You're awesome. Thank you so much there, Ross. And Sanctuary Tank, reset in there too. Thanks so much there, Tank. Okay, what does our pirate hand look like? Looks like a lot of lands. A lot of lands. I don't really want to go to five. We'll just give this a try. Don't really feel like going to five. The organized play announcement looked looked pretty good. I I just barely scanned scanned it. I don't I don't know too many if any particulars really about it. But I, as long as they as long as paper you know tournaments and paper magic tournaments and everything are um, are more important and everything, I'm all for that. You know, like I I want uh, more. Emphasis. That's what I was looking for. More emphasis on, you know, like Grand Prix and, and tournaments and everything like that. So, hopefully, that's the case. I am hoping my opponent here attacks with some Land War Elves. That's what I'm hoping here. Yeah, I'll be playing the Sultai deck. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I'll be playing the Sultai deck. Yeah, I'll be playing Brawl when it comes out. Yeah, constructed formats on Arena I'll be playing, like Historic, Brawl, that kind of stuff. Wow. What a blowout. What a draw. So the the Urban Utopia here doesn't actually add extra mana. It just ETBs draws a card and then the land can tap for any color. So they still only they still have five mana. And as you can tell by the jellyfish for three. I think I really need to have like Siren Storm Tamer protection for the Poisoner. Is their last card another Krasis? Yeah, no fire, no steam. Not expecting it to be. Ah, it's a forest. Um. 
Yeah, we can trade. That's fine. Why do you want paper game the paper game to be prioritized when you mostly play online? My statement wasn't about priority, really. No fire. It was like that I, I want it to matter. I want... There's not really online tournaments. If there's just if there's a bunch of online tournaments, too, I'd be happy for that. Sweet. Awesome animation. Haven't seen that yet. But over the past year or so, Wizards has really crumbled organized play and, and made traveling to tournaments and everything not matter. And I, I don't like that. I... I want magic to grow. I don't like how they've been tearing it apart, kind of. And so hopefully it they're getting the foundation for it to grow again. Uh, let's see. So I think having important large tournaments like, like Grand Prix that everybody can enter gives people incentive to want to play the game and continue to play the game and get better and everything like that. And that's, that's what I want. You know, like that's, that's good for, for me, for people, for, for everything. Cause if it's just, if it's just online arena, it's hard to see like, you know, besides like the fun of the game and everything, um, you may not necessarily need to like play as much or, or give, give as, you know, uh, try as hard and everything with magic if you're just um, playing ranked or something. Where if you're playing big tournaments, I don't know. Um, hopefully, y'all understand what I'm saying. That I I want magic to grow. And So I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing with this matchup. I guess we're just going to be fiery cannonading and hoping that we get really lucky like that last game and fiery cannonade kills a whole bunch of things. Hostage Shaker is awesome against Hydroid Crisis and good against like Risen Reef and stuff like that too. Uh, good against like Land War Elf, just you know getting an extra mana source there. So bringing in, maxing out on fiery cannonade and Hostage Shakers. Um, Angrath is expensive, but I didn't trim any Angrath because that's that's another card that's really great against uh, Hydroid Crisis. Hmm. You get to steal that Crisis, sacrifice it. We're gonna need to keep drawing some lands here. I battle for the forces of good. I will rid you of your corruption. Because really good chance that it will be able to trigger Admiral Becca Brass next turn. Awesome. Alright, so we'll kill Karn. Farewell. And thank you for the lesson. Because, you know, we're... Like, unless they have a flyer, we're going to have three unblockable... And then, what, we gain control of the Golos? Or do we take a Land War Elf? Probably the Golos, right? It does kind of feel like my opponent has Veil of Summer for how they're keeping this land wall up. 
Yeah, Becca Brass. Give me that. And then next turn, we hit him for three with three more pirates. Get to take something else next turn. That is great, Admiral Beckett Brass. Oh wow, that is awesome. Just every turn, you just steal stuff. Then, wow, that's cool. Grixis Pirates doing it. It worked. Loaming Shaman. Wow, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and <clears throat> Admiral Becca Brass has a cool animation too. The darned vampires. These vampires are really good. I want the don't want to play the captain it's a four four play the captain playing a bunch of captains we got the dire fleet captain and then the the lannery storm captain really expecting them to trade here. I think that's worth a trade. Yeah, yeah, your cards are a lot more aggressive than mine. I get it. God, these knights are so good. I did the math yes, like the the quick math I did yesterday. Uh, led me to before yesterday's XP that you could earn 44 more levels, you know, including I don't know what's supposed to... <clears throat> yeah, so like in including, um. Including the other two plankations and everything, that there was 44 more levels to earn before the end of the season. You get 7.25 levels per week.
There is no there's no losing XP. That's not really a thing. The esti the estimate that that I saw from Wizards like whenever they changed to the new system uh with the weekly wins instead of the daily wins was that if you played every day and did everything and, and got the XP every day, you'd, you'd end up at level 92 throughout the this season. This season is shorter than other seasons will be. That's what I'm talking about. That's a card. Just because the release the release of this core set to the fall set is the shortest in be between release sets. Like the the release of the fall set to the the next set is a longer time period. They're not just exactly even. Hostage taker coming in clutch. We don't know the exact cutoff date yet, but my estimation when I whenever I was doing my estimating was like uh, September like twenty third or twenty twenty fourth. Like a, it's it's whenever El Throne of Eldraine releases, and as far as I've seen, they haven't announced exactly when that is on Arena. The original. You know, like originally how you just earned one level a day, you weren't going to be able to get to 100 because there wasn't 100 days. It was like mid-80s or something like that. I don't remember exactly how much. And so that's why I bought the 10-level 10, the 10 level pack, like the 10-level bonus originally. Um, but then whenever they updated to the, the new system where now you earn 7.25 levels per week instead of 7, they estimated... Is I mean I should I should probably block with Lannery Storm there. It was estimated that uh, at that point, that you like I said before that you get to level ninety two. Um, I don't know if that estimation took into took into consideration like there was like whatever code there was that got you like an extra level earlier in the season, and of course the Plaincation events. I don't know if it took any of those into consideration. So is this lethal? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm counting ten. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, it's eleven. Okay, good. All right, so we're pumping you up. Three, five, ten. Man, this fiery candidate has been awesome, though. Hostage Shaker, awesome. Fiery Cannonade, awesome. Got a game against the Vampires. Uh, I think Angrath's a little slower here. Let's trim one Angrath. Definitely trim this Ruin Raider. Um... Hey, Rats! Thanks for the host. Welcome, everybody, from Rats Relic Stream. What we're doing today here is we are playing a Throwback Thursday stream which entails that I will be 
or I, I'm building decks around cards that are rotating out of standard, uh, some rares and mythics that never really got to see any play. We built an Arcades, the street strategist deck for our Bant Defenders last time. We got Admiral Beckett Brass with Grixis Pirates right now. And then we got Moldrotha with Sultai Value in a little bit. That's what we're doing on, on each Thursday until rotation. The paper release is October 4th, Moria. Whenever, the Throne of Eldraine release, that's, that's for paper for October 4th. That's not for Arena. The pre-release for paper is the 27th to 28th that weekend for paper. The last few sets have been released on Arena before they've been released, but before the pre-release on in paper. So expecting it to be on Arena before that 27, 28 weekend, which is the pre-release weekend. And so if it's if it's like the this last set, it should be on like the Monday or Tuesday before. So uh, I think that's like the 23rd or 24th. Uh, thanks, rats. The rats pickle. Well, welcome everybody. All right. We'll see how good this fiery cannonade is. And another another thing from their from their uh, report was that they they did want to reward people playing later on in the season because most people play Magic whenever a new set is released and then as time goes down uh, before the next set comes out you know, there's less people that play Magic just in general and then a new set's released and then more people play again kind of thing. It's cyclical, cyclical in that nature. And so there was there was a statement of wanting to give more experience to people that continue to play magic for a longer period of time there like towards the end of the season so there there may be more events like the plancation events that they haven't announced yet that could be um announced that could you know could have more experience towards the end of that season to help help you get some extra levels there too yeah, that's just kind of speculation on my part. I don't, you know, there's no no announcements of that kind of thing happening. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if there was a more like playcation type events or more experience type things uh, in September. Before that. Oh, thanks, rats. Okay. So cannonades looking nice. I think I need to just cannonade now. So they don't flip landing. It'll cost them four life also. The fiery cannonades have been awesome. I could have done it on their turn. I don't know if there's really a... I guess that would be the reason to do it on their turn. Lieutenant. Alright, there was, there was a reason to do it on their turn. They just got one card left. Hoping it's not removal. Either way, they're not going to be able to attack with the Vanguard this turn. So even if they kill the Hostage Taker, they'll deal two to me with the Lieutenant. And then... Uh, have Angrath steal Vanguard. Nope, don't need to. Well, their last card that they just drew is probably not another removal spell, right?
That's a removal spell. That's a good removal spell, too. Hey, Matthew. Oh, Matthew, you jinxed it. You said, hope they don't draw any Sorens. No. That's why they drew the, the Soren. Hey, Rats of the Twitch Prime sub as well. Ever seen water burn? You will. Well, thanks for everything, Rats. Thanks for the host. A little bit ago, and your crew for my freedom, and the uh, a fair price. The sub there, really appreciate all that. That will cost you dearly. How long have you? How long have you been streaming there, rats? Come on, no vampires! No vampires! Don't kill my Angrath! Don't kill my Angrath! No vampire. No. That's a vampire. Are they going to sacrifice? They are not going to sacrifice the knight, though, to kill the Angrath. Okay. Well, I, th I think I need to like play the Spectral Sailor because that can kill the Soren. Vengeance will come for you one day. This Knight of the Ebon Legion is a huge problem, though. Well, basically, I'm going to go down to one here. I'm not blocking. I'm going to go down to one, so like a... S Okay, that's fine. Still not blocking. Back to the Admiral Beckett Brass Trigger! The, sea I go. the Admiral. So the trigger, so if if three pirates, yeah, an admiral's a pirate, if three pirates hit your opponent, then at end step you can take anything anything they got. So I'm gonna so give me this knight. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good one. I'll take that one. Thank you. Is this the best Grixis deck? Hey, we, we triggered that game two against our other opponent. Against the ramp person also. Yoink. <laughs> oh my gosh, this pirate's deck is awesome. I know I could have drawn a card of Spectral Sailor. I kept up the Knight of the Ebon Legion trigger. I don't. It really doesn't matter. Like what they, they can't really have anything that that saves them here. Like contempt doesn't save them. Wow, two o four o in games against two good decks. You know, Simic ramp stuff. And vampires. Grixis pirates for real. I can't. I'm. I'm pretty surprised we beat vampires to be honest. Settle would have saved them. That is true. I would have got. I would have got wrecked by settle. As I was like bragging over there about how good my deck was, and then they cast settle the wreckage, and then I'd cry. Yeah, three three pirates have to hit the opponent. It's tough, but that's why we have like these little flyers. We have the unblockable departed deckhand. 
It can happen. And it only checks at end steps. So you can like attack with like the things first and they like take they take like three three of like the pirates hitting them. And then afterwards you can play your Admiral Beckett Brass and then checks at end step. And then they're like, oh darn, I'm gonna get something stolen. And Admiral is like yoink. And there we go. Opponent, where are you at? I want to play some pirates. Arr. Yes, there's a there's going to be a new format called Historic after rotation, which will include everything that's in standard right now and Throne of Eldraine, and it will continue just to add the, the sets. It will be non-rotating. So it will continue to get larger and larger and more powerful and more powerful of a format. But So it will have nine sets whenever it starts, and it will be called Historic. No, only three of the unhinged lands have been available for rewards so far. There have been three pl plaincation events. The mountain, the swamp, and the forest. Sorry, forest, then mountain, then swamp. They start on Sundays, end on Wednesdays. So there's planes and island to go. Um I feel like I'm going to need this extra damage here against Wild Growth Walker. We need, we need to draw another land, a fourth land, and then we need to draw Admiral Becca Brass. So we got our three, you know, two flyers and a deckhand. I could have saved Poisoner, of course, to surprise the Wild Growth Walker. Went, went for the damage. That end up may end up being a bad decision. Wow, no land drops or nothing. Come on, no land drop, no land drop. Pass turn. That's fine, that's fine. Just no Jade Light Ranger, basically. Oh, so close. I need a land. So this is nine here. Almost lethal. Alright, they, they found the forest. Land? Oh, baby. If, if they know about the Becca Brass, they can just trade their Wild Growth Walker off. So maybe it's better not to show them. 
Becca Brass. So they don't just have the Wild Growth Walker block a Poisoner. I wasn't expect exactly expecting that. I could have saved my... I guess I could have played the cannonade to save the creature, but... I just want to take the Wild Growth Walker. Dude, this Grixis Pirate deck is sweet. Becca Brass is so cool. All right, so they have a bunch of creatures also. Hostage Taker, awesome, against Wild Growth Walker. Real question is if I want to add in more cannonades or not. Presumably they have mana creatures. They gotta have Risen Reef. Yeah, they probably have a decent number of things for these cannonades to do. So what else have, what have I been cutting before? Got like one Lannery Storm, one st one Siren Storm Tamer. Alright, sounds good. <laughs> Should call the deck Pirate Yoink. I mean, that's what pirates do, though, right? They gotta steal stuff. That's why they're pirates. <laughs> that is exactly what pirates do. What's up, Boot? Oh, this hand is good. I like that Lannery Storm to get us to Becca Brass. We gotta cut something though. Rotation proof mono black control. I'm not sure if there is enough stuff there. Like, I don't know. I don't know if mono black has enough tools. Because you have the new Karn, but the new Karn has no good artifacts really to grab. Because all the good artifacts are rotating out. Like, there's like a couple, but a lot of the good artifacts are rotating out. You don't get old Karn. It's tough. Um... But yeah, I could I could give it a try. You still have still have dread presence. There's still there's still a lot of good stuff. No, I don't want to trade Captain and Jade Light Ranger. We got this fiery cannonade, and also having creatures is important for Admir Admiral Becca Brass. I don't think that's a good trade for me. What? All right, well, looks like we're going to pick up our first loss. Getting stuck on two lands.
No, I, I don't have any unclaimed territories in here. Our colors may have been just fine without them. So far. Ow. Yep, no decks immune to. Oh, they have Hostage Shaker also? To only draw two lands. Do I need Bedevil then? Legion's End. I don't think Freebooter is very good. I don't want it over anything else we have. Just a, a one, two, the body is so bad, you know, just attacking for one, just the game just doesn't, doesn't kill people very quickly. I'd rather have like the one drops that attack for one than two drop that attacks for one. It doesn't actually, like, they can always kill it, they always get their thing back. It, like never works out like where you actually like take a card and then they don't get to ever, they play, they don't get to play that card again until the game ends. The, the, like, that doesn't happen. Yeah, and you also, you also need a pair of Freebooter with a fast clock. Or, like, or ways to make it bigger. To make it, make the body matter. You know, stuff like in Modern, of course, there's Thalia's Lieutenant, make it a lot bigger. Just don't have that in in standard. Three two is gonna kill us before a two two kills them. Pretty easy math there. I don't get you know I could have kept their jade light around to try to hostage take their jade light, but. I feel like they're going to play something better for me to hostage take, like a Cavalier of Thorns or Hydra Crisis or even a Chupacabra. Or a Yurok. Of course, we have the Storm Tamer to protect Hostage Taker. That good pirate. Good pirate synergy there. Dang, 
Dang, that's sad. I liked my flyer. I wanted to keep it around. So hopefully we draw another hostage taker and get to take their hostage taker and their Yurok. It's not a good sign that they're scrying on top though. It's not a great sign. Um, am I supposed to trade, trade your rock away? I don't actually really have too many, if any, ETB stuff, right? Like, I don't have Daredevil in here, so it's just like I have two other hostage takers in the whole deck. I feel like their Yurok's a whole lot better than mine. So those trade. Like, their Yurok probably does a ton of stuff. If they want to trade with, you know, Hostage Shaker Brontodon, that gets two things out of there. I think I'm fine with that. Basically, our Hostage Shaker got rid of their Brontodon, Hostage Shaker, and Yurok. You know, like, that's not. That doesn't seem so bad. That could have been the card they kept on top, right? Yes, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Maybe they kept the cast down on top. No, they have. They had two scries. Maybe they kept that cast down on top. So if I attack out, both captains are five power. They get to just eat hostage taker. Eat hostage taker. Have wild growth bounce. They take ten, but they gain three. They only take. It's not a good. It's not good. I really wish I had my Spectral Sailor. Let me draw cards. Ooh, what if we draw Angrath? That'd be cool. Ugh. Double Scry? That's so good. Okay, okay. Now we're talking. We'll see if they just do the obvious blocks. Okay, they just did the obvious blocks. So I can save Hostage Taker and kill Donald. Or I kill Yurok, and both my Hostage Takers are dead still. I think we kill Yurok. Yay. Let's 
So these are four power. Basically, let's see in here, like, you know, we could have drawn a, a poisoner of our own. Basically, you know, just doing this first, see if I need to shock in, you know, have anything up or anything. <laughs> All right, rats. Have a uh, Take care. Good luck in the MCQ this weekend. Thanks for the host and the Twitch Prime sub and everything. All right, going double, double chumps. I don't really have a good pirate impression or imitation. Arr. I don't. I don't. I got. I got nothing there. I'm not very piratey. Wow, the pirates are three and zero. Oh. Three and O. Oh. oh man, this deck is sweet. This deck is sweet. We're beating good decks too. These are good decks we're taking down. What be a pi pirate's favorite kind of sweater? I don't know, Alcator. What be a pirate's favorite kind of sweater? Argyle. That's me. I like it. All right, let's keep this. Our captain. If we get rid of the captain, we could get rid of hostage taker. No, we'll get rid of the captain. Whatever you get rid of, you draw another. Them's the rules. We got rid of a captain, draw a new captain. Temer. What kind of Temer deck's being played over here? That's rude. Hammer Elementals. Yeah, they could have just discard a land to kill these two twos. Just pretty rough. Better chance they don't, you know, like if I if I let them keep the twister, they can just, you know, probably kill the twister with hostage taker. Ugh, all shock lands. All shock lands all the time. Get him. Get him, Poisoner. Get him. Yeah, and this is a tough one. It's a lot of 3-3s three over there. 
We need to get some more unblockable. So we need to get some more flying pirates. So of course I can discard these lands and do two damage with each land. Unfortunately, Omnath's a 5 5 now. That would have been nice to be able to kill Omnath. Um, Still don't care for Kite Sail Freebooter. Still would rather have Departed Deckhand. Which is also unblockable. Behold, nature's true power. Nissel ult's not even a big deal. I hope my opponent Nissa ults. I am much more scared of Nissa continually to make creatures than Nissa ultimating. Hey, Lou. Oh. I didn't consider Omnath with Nissa ult. Okay. Never mind. That that changes things. I did not consider Omnath drawing millions of cards. Okay, that that makes Nissa ult a lot bigger deal. How do I kill this Omnath? Darn, that's not a land. Um Yeah, I guess I could have Living Twister. Okay, so I need to draw a land. 
That's what I need to do, is I need to draw a land. Yeah, so I need to draw a land so I can double activate deck hand. I mean, I'm at five, though. I have to attack with three creatures, take Nyssa, get one one more creature. The land so no, I, I should just be dead. Nyssa's really tough. Taking four. So yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, we played, what, six matches in three hours for the Quasi-Reef deck? <laughs> but... I, I'm going to one. Why don't you just shock me? I went I went to one. Alright, hostage taker is still great. Let's get bedevils in here. Rune Raider is our anti-control card. I don't really want right here. Cannonade doesn't look spectacular. I think it's just kind of Risen Reef and Llanowar Elf is all that it kills. Kind of replacing that with Bedevil here. Maybe a cap, maybe, yeah, I guess a Lannery Storm. Okay. Oh, thanks, Plague Vendor. I'm glad you like that, the Demir, rotation proof Demir control deck. That one was really cool. Yeah, Duress is, Duress is a good way to snag. Is a good way to snag Anissa. I would not keep this on the draw. Maybe on the play we can cannonade some mana creatures. Hoping they got a couple land werewolves over there. No, yeah, that's fine, Kitato. Um, yeah. Play it again like uh, Yeah, I, yeah, no problem. I don't I don't mind playing that deck again at all. I that deck I may be playing that deck on Saturday for the MCQ. Honestly, the quasi reef deck. Um, I have a Sultai deck that I want to try out, but if the Sultai deck doesn't work out, oh come on, play another Land Werewolf. If the Sultai deck doesn't really work out, then I'll be playing. Um, then then I made Audible down to that uh, quasi reef deck because yeah, it felt really good. The matchup against Feather, of course, didn't look so great. And I don't know how I'll do against Vampires. How does Hostage Taker work with lands? You can't cast lands, right? So I guess they just remain exiled? Do they come back when Hostage Taker dies? You're like, how, do, how does Hostage Taker work with Nyssa lands for anybody that plays Hostage Taker against Nyssa? No fire, like, how does that even work? No steel. Do they come back? 
Oh man, so they do come back, so you just can't play them and then they come back? That's bad. I want it just to be exiled forever. I don't think you can play it, because it says you may cast that card, and you can't cast lands. We will not fail. Harness the elements. Blows temper the blade. Well, unfortunately, our opponent did have Nissa. All right, man, this Nissa card is so messed up. No fire. <laughs> I, I don't know how we're gonna beat Nissa. Sure, we can we can hostage take a three three, but they just make a new three three. Could have Vela somewhere also. Vela Summer is a messed up card too. These green cards are so good. All right, looks like our pirates are gonna finally lose one. Be wary of the ground you walk on. All sail for high and dry. Can't beat infinite free three threes. It's kind of unbeatable. Three three vigilant haste creatures for free every turn. It's so aggressive. Yeah, I am. I'm going to be playing a Nissa deck at the MCQ. That's for sure. We'll see what kind of Nissa deck that is, though. All right, our pirates are three and one. We saw Fiery Cannonade wasn't really that good that game. It did kill the Llanowar Elf, but everything else they, you know, there's nothing else they played that Cannonade would have killed. Go get him, Captain. Do we have another Vampire Test here? Espa. Asper can definitely be tougher. I hope my opponent plays Narset. That's the card I want them to play here is Narset. Or or a creature. Or like Hero Precinct one. Uh Guess. That's not great. They're probably blocking with that thing. Maybe they don't. Don't block, don't block, don't block, don't block. Darn, they blocked. I want my non threatening pirates to do damage. Ugh. Why a flying creature?
devastating. Absolutely devastating. Playing our tribal creature deck. And just destroy all creatures. Yeah, it's pretty devastating there, Hawkeye. I can no longer stand by and watch. Keep up the pace. Yeah, I mean this this is just over. We don't need to sit through this. We don't have a shot. Four mana wrath, Hawkeye. Okay, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to try to play a long game here. Cannonade is out. I mean, I guess Cannonade against Hero of Precinct One is really good. It's not good against anything else, but Hero of Precinct One is good. I think this is kind of a matchup where we take out Admiral Becca Brass. Yeah. Direfully Captain, not spectacular either. I mean, I just, neither is Storm Tamer, really. Yeah, they have Hero. There's there's no decks that play that three drop that, that, that play that three drop that don't play Hero. Devil feels so bad. A good call. I should just take out the lands because our, our pirates are just at sea. Maybe leave in, yeah, maybe leave in an, an island or whatever. We don't need the rest of the lands. I like it. Correct. So, yeah, hostage taker can be used offensively or defensively. It's not a may ability, but you can, you can hostage take your own creatures so that you don't overextend into Kaya's Wrath kind of thing. So like if, if you do have a couple creatures out, you can just play Hostage Taker, take your own creature, and then if they Kaya's Wrath, you get your creature back. Tombbound Lich is a good one. We're going to be playing that card next in our Soul Tie Value deck up next. Cool. I'll take that trade. Sir Eulen Drake. All right, come on, draw land, draw land, draw land. Yay. What, you want me to pet you? Sorry, I'll pet you more. You're just few. No fire, no steel. 
seems like people really like these anti-color things. You know, I've been playing against like the Ceratops and now Drakes. I thought Ceratops multiple times. Yeah, Dire, yeah, Daredevil Thought Erasure is pretty quality. So they kind of have to take Daredevil. Unless their hand's terrible. Why would you why do you hate pirates? Pirates are cool. Just like in general or like in magic, you don't like pirates. Or just okay as a concept that makes sense to, to hate that that makes sense people are like their whole purpose is to like steal stuff that's not that's not too cool no fire no steel All right, so Eulen Drake strikes. It's not bad. Angrath is awesome. Hopefully it's another spell that we make them discard with Angrath. Nope, land. Supposed to just draw a card right now, I guess, because like Thought Erasure, I shouldn't. Alright, turn four, Angrath. On the play. Did a lot of work. Get a second cannonade in here because a hero. Come on, game. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. All right, so we'll have a two-drop counterspell. I thought I took out all those. I guess I have one left, maybe, in the deck. Probably should have played one of my red lands.
I'm known for my excellent timing. Doubtful. This might be a bad idea. Certainly. Should have seen that coming. Getting a bunch of treasures, of course, are really good with hostage taker. We need to take something later. We'll see if they learn their lesson to take the daredevil or not. But I could see them wanting to take hostage taker or the counter spell. Probably not taking the deck hand or the Becca brass. Wow, took the Becca brass. And they milled over the hero of Dominaria. Interesting. All right, so the attack allows us to have the lookout's dispersal available as well. Probably take Kaya's Wrath. Narset's kind of a pain, though, too. Take the Narset. So it's basically either take Kaya's Wrath, counter Narset, or take Narset, counter Kaya's Wrath. Those are our options here. Oh man, a bunch of spells. That was a pretty good end of the God Eternals. We can next turn we'll be able to uh, pay mana to have the daredevil be be unblockable.
Yeah, Haas is taking the token because the Serial and Drake doesn't really matter. The token's like a 4 4 that can kill me. Basically, like, we have the battlefield pretty well in hand right now. If there's another Kaya's Wrath, I'll have this Spectral Sailor to rebuild. Is this better than drawing cards with Spectral Sailor? Debatable. So shocking in here so that we have the the one mana for Sailor plus the four mana to draw a card. Also, in case of removal. Departed Deckhand, pretty sweet, though, as you can tell. Alright, well now it's time to play this and start drawing cards. That's a good one. Gets us that one damage in. Stay alive. All right, the pirates. Getting us there. We are four and one. Hey, six one nine. All right, we're four and one. We are heading to the final boss with Grixis Pirates. Let's get to our final boss playlist. So, pirates are better than Esper. Better than uh, vampires. We beat Blue Green Ramp. We lost to Teamer Elementals. And we beat Sultai. Uh, Sultai, uh, I don't know. ETB stuff. Sultai, your rock. Hey, Narnin. Oh, no. Vampires again with us not having a very good hand here. They're on the play. If I go Lannery Storm, attack with Lannery Storm next turn, then I'll be able to play Angrath the following turn and steal the Vanguard.
At least they don't get to look at my hand or anything. Because the deck hand just gets sacrificed. Hmm. So if I... If I play Landry Storm and attack, they do get to flip Legion's Landing. Kind of flip Legion's Landing either way. This will set up for a better next turn for me, maybe going like Becca Brass plus Poisoner. They have a whole bunch more cards, though. I'm not going to beat it. Oh. Yeah. They have that thing. I'm not beating that. Blood is my beginning. It will be your end. Not sure my crusade. Unbeatable combo. So more hostage taker, more cannonade. Less ruin raider, less lannery storm, less storm tamer. All right, we're down a game to the final boss. The final boss is, is always really tough. So we knew it wasn't going to be easy coming into this. That's not great. What is going on? I guess you'll do House Markov Group. Gosh. I guess you do. Was that because I conceded during the Soren anim the Soren thing, I guess? Come on. Welcome to the family. House Mark Joy. I guess you'll do. I desire to join my What is crusade. this? It's so unnecessary. Oh, I had nothing to do with that. I have that's not that's nothing that I was doing. That's definitely something with the game. That's that's nothing that I could do with that sound bug there.
It lasts a f two turns. So this will make them use their turn to activate Knight of the Ebon Legion to trade. That's a great draw. Wow, that's a great draw. Ramp me up to Angrath next turn. See, Poisoners are sweet. I'll just play this main phase to get the pump on the Lannery Storm here. Never see no fire, no steel. Start ripping apart their hand. Yeah, get rid of that Soren, please. Thank you. Thanks, kitty. All right, we're going to game three. That was a very good game for us. Very good game for us. Let's get, let's cut one Dire Fleet Captain. What else came out? Oh, get that back in there. Instead of the Storm Tamer, because maybe we can have enough like Storm Tamer, Spectral Sailors and stuff like where we can trigger Admiral Becca Brass, you know, a bunch of like these cheap flyers and steal their things with that. So there we go. Um, yeah, for elemental decks, usually decks with like lots of Wraths, um, you know, lots of creature destruction is good against elemental decks. Um, Takatli Honor Guard is a, is a small white creature that's really good against them, not letting their ETB effects do anything. Um, usually, yeah, usually the really aggressive decks do well against elementals too. Vampires, like I think Vampires is pretty, pretty well favored against elementals. And mono red. Not as sure about mono red. I, I'd be more comfortable with vampires. All right, let's draw watery grave. Watery grave. Not a watery grave. There's Watery Grave. So, of course, unfortunately, our opponent has the one card in their deck that's one early drop that's really, really good against Fiery Cannonade with the Danto Vanguard. That card's a beating.
Need more lands. Need to rip land there. I could could a double spell with the two drops and then another land and go Angrath and take this Vanguard. I can't say Vanguard forever though. They're down to ten. If we would have hit our two land drops to get to Angrath, I would have liked our chances a lot better in this game. But down to Vanguard can be a real problem. Car can definitely be a problem. We died. Came pretty close to getting the five five win, but our five win dream died. Still a pretty sweet one here though for our throwback Thursday. Definitely a really cool deck here. We played six we played six real good decks. You know, like we didn't play against we didn't you know like sometimes in the in the in the those leagues sometimes you do get you play against beginner decks as y'all know watching the channel and everything and we really didn't there we played against six really good competitive decks um and going four and two nothing to scoff at there that's a that's a pretty pretty good uh pretty good showing yeah our, our losses were close we had a lot of close wins also um you know it's gonna happen when we play against good decks like that we saw that like my lack of removal certainly hurts in some of those aggro matchups. Even though we that was our first aggro deck to lose to, um, you know, losing that second time to vampires. But yeah, this was this was pretty sweet. Admiral Becca Brass was awesome. Deckhand was awesome. Poisoner was awesome. These things were really good. Direfleet Captain kind of did its job. Yeah, it did. It was good. Really, all of our cards did pretty good. Hostage Taker, Angrath. Fiery Cannonade was really impressive for us a lot of the time. Um, I don't know if there was like one card in particular that was like a most clutch card. Really just everything did well. You know, I, I really liked the card choices here with the Grixis Pirate deck. Um, I think the the card that was the worst was our one of here with this Ruin Raider. Because like this card is really like for Esper, like for control. Uh, and we only played against that like one time and... Even then, I'm not sure how much really like that. Like, but this card's such a liability against the aggro decks. We never drew this card ever, but I boarded it out in almost every single match. Um, so yeah, it could just be another Lannery Storm. Could be another Fiery Cannonade in the main. Um, could be like a Daredevil in the main deck. You know, like that's that's certainly an option. Or a Lookout's Dispersal. You know, you could just basically play like one of these cards in the main. Could play a Bedevil. You know, so we could we could do something like that instead of this Ruin Raider. I think, I don't know which one I'd want, but I think we want to replace it with either a Daredevil, a Lookout's Dispersal, or a, a Cannonade, or a Bedevil. Basically, one of these one of these four. Um, and you can keep the same number in your sideboard also. Uh, maybe just playing another Hostage Taker main deck, actually. Maybe that's the thing, is just put the fourth Hostage Taker in the main deck. That card was pretty great. Um... Yeah, you could you could have a you could have one main deck Legion's End. Could have one main deck Legion's End. I mean, that was the first time that Adanto Vanguard really hurt us real bad. I mean, because like we have like the Hostage Takers and and Angrath's like these things take out Vanguard. 
I know they're a little bit more expensive, but that's what we did in the other games, and it was fine. But the, the Vanguard got us that last one. But so there we go. Uh, Grixis Pirates, definitely a thumbs up. Pretty sweet uh, deck here for Throwback Thursday. Admiral Becca Brass, awesome, awesome card. Uh, if you're watching it later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons here. And also don't forget to let me know in the comment section what rares and mythics, you know, like Admiral Becca Brass, that's going to rotate out that didn't get to see a standard play that you want to see for a future throwback Thursday, like next week. What do you want me to build around? Um, but there we go. That's it here for Grixis Pirates. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.